very, very good job. If I, if I could just make one final statement before you guys have your discussion, and I apologize. What we're asking for here, we're, we're trying to do a good thing. And um, I understand the not in my backyard sentiment. I have been there. I've been on the other side, protesting the development. It was a shopping mall, but um, I just don't feel like the issues that were raised in Board of Zoning after we've been able to investigate them and vet this information, <coughs> just don't see that it's a reason for uh, a, a council like yourself to, you know, <coughs> decline investment, development, housing that's needed in the community. Um, so I, I would just ask that, you know, you, you fairly weigh this, and I know you will. Um, I just don't think that we're creating uh, an issue. I think that it's, you know, everyone would rather have that open acre because it's it's very nice. It's very it gives it a role feel. But um, we've been doing this, looking at properties as the mayor knows for uh, about 18 months now, and uh, it's not easy to, to be able to buy properties. So we did try and go out on Elizabeth. I've tried twice to buy a house back there to maybe mitigate some of the traffic from all going on North Robinson to no avail. So we the house or just the section of property. So we tried the house. Mm -hmm. One of the homes that actually owns the pe uh, so uh, what? would have given a, a, a would have given the uh, right away. We're going to continue to pursue that. Ideally, uh, what we'd like to do would be to just uh, have two duplexes exit on Robinson and two duplexes you know, go out up Elizabeth, which would really split it up. Absolutely no straight through because that would just turn into a racetrack there. So, um, but you know, obviously this all has to be uh, approved and, 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 uh, and we'll go through that process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bought the house on North Street, 
that's beside the Baptist pastor, Bill, and his wife, and they neglected the outside of the house. We didn't have time, but the neighbors let us know it's it's a shit show in here. That's Look true. at this. And that was the first thing. We pulled contractors off of other jobs. Uh, and when we do them, we remodel them like I would live in them. So I wouldn't want a stone driveway. I'm having concrete. I don't. We bought Washington Street, and we uh, put money in the exterior of that. It had asphalt, but it was dated, and we seal coated it, re landscaped it. So uh, Mark and I take a lot of pride, and it's somewhat offensive that. They would see this as a negative, but that's their right, and good for them. And let's applaud them, and let's find out what their concerns are and address them. Some of those Clyde Street I did know about with the uh, apartment building at the end of it, but, but you sure, certainly pointed out uh, a number of others that I was, had not really thought about uh, being in the same classification. Um, as we look at this, uh, I believe in addition to um, you know, whether we approve it or not, you can approve it with certain stipulations if we choose to do so, is that correct? Uh, Justin, so you know, if you want to put conditions on it, um, the street gets widened or if you can't put it in a street, um, literally that is configured with other things or things that could be stipulated. Before we open it up, I'd like to, to know if you have other comments or questions. That's the answer to one about you've got to manage the company so you're really selective on who gets it. It sounds like that's part of the question too is, you know, sometimes you get renters that don't keep stuff up. So that's kind of false to me. Uh, every person living in the home has to fill out an application and has to have a background check. And one person can qualify their income, but every person will be checked and has been. So the home in Florida we just did, uh, a guy that spreads hog manure and his health, and so his health had to have their information. So uh, I lost a runner because, uh, or a potential, because, well, I don't know, because uh, his roommate, maybe there was something there. So they have to pass a credit check, a background check, a 
everybody in there has to have you know their car, their license number, get a copy of the driver's license. So, um, and we have a leasing company that takes care of that to keep us legal. And uh, she's smarter than than we, and that's kind of you know that's kind of detailed, and you have to do it right in order to yeah. do it right all the time, and not on two years of no, That's her job, and we pay a fee, a handsome fee. And you know, operate within the law. That, that's critical. And she's very good at this. That's why we we went to her. But there's financial requirements. It, it just is a it's a it's a very well. Um, she does a great job qualifying people, and I think for that reason, you know, we don't turn people over. Yeah. These will I will also say these will rent. I don't know the exact numbers, but they will rent somewhere between probably 1200 1800 a month. So these are not $600, $700 uh, apartments. Which is not to be critical. Not being the critical. community has a need for all of it. There's all kinds of income levels. These will needs. attract more uh, young, young professionals, um, you know, families that, you know, operate, you know, they're very legit people you'd like to have as neighbors. That's what we're looking for. Uh, we are going to open it up now for um, for comments from the public and questions addressed to the Hammonds. Um, the procedure that we're going to follow is this. Um, please raise your hand if you desire to speak, and then we'll ask when you're recognized that you state your name and address, and uh, that's for the record, and then uh, please offer your comments or questions in a respectful manner. Um, we will begin um, uh, now. Yes. My name is Craig Fox. I live at 102 North Robinson Street. Uh, me and my wife have lived at 102 North Robinson Street for almost 20 years. When we moved there, there's only four houses on that street. Now there's seven. And that's including Pyatt's house, which is on St. Manilloy Road and Robinson Street. <clears throat> it is a good, safe place for our kids to grow up and play. And uh, the special exemption will endanger the safety, comfort, and health because the road width is only 13.3 foot wide in front of our house. That's at the mailbox. I know we've already went over this. <clears throat> the traffic from Camber Estates also uses Robinson Street. Even though it is a dead end, my wife has literally had to yell at people to slow down coming in or out of Robinson Street. <clears throat> there are 64 kids or grandkids that live on or visit here. Robinson Street is zoned U1, single family dwelling. <clears throat> uh, Robinson Street, I do not think, is set up for drainage and runoff for four multifamily duplexes especially on one lot. Our property value will also go down because the people do not own it. They don't respect their property. Most times they don't take care of it. They treat their neighbors like crap. I have nothing against with renters. I've been a renter for years. I was lucky to own my own home. <clears throat> now, there will be more traffic than what we have now. And even though People have monitored it. They don't live there. They don't know how much traffic's up and down that road all the time. And as far as road width, no matter where you are on that road, you either have to stop and get off the side of the road or get off the side of the road to try to pass them way at the same time. <clears throat> and if this is passed, it won't be known as a quiet part of Delphi anymore. It's been known for just single family housing. To me, with the petition with 25 signatures from Robinson Street and surrounding area, it should be a clear sign to the council that this is not wanted in our area. And you should stand with the citizens in our town and not against them. If anything, the road will have to be widened. And in my yard alone, there are two telephone poles, a fire hydrant, a water meter, and gas lines. Is the Hammonds going to pay for this, or is the taxpayers going to have to suck it up and pay for it? I 
do have a question. If there's supposedly hardly any traffic on the road, couldn't they put up a tire or a monitor to monitor the traffic? Because there's a lot more traffic than what's suggested. That's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Any others who would like to speak? Yes. My name is Randall Hyatt. I'm with 1209 Sendo Miller Road. We're on the corner of Miller Road and Robinson Street. I want to start out with a couple of things that you brought up. According to the city, Aaron Lyons, Robinson Street is a dead-end road. You cannot go out the other way because of Jeff Watson's property. And I applaud you for spending a few days of research. I have 30 years of research there. Just because there's no traffic today doesn't mean next week it will be flying with cars. It all depends on the Chamber of State's renters. And you're wanting to add more renters to this. So you just happen to hit a day or a week when there's not much traffic coming that way. After you left, three cars from the Chamber of State. Like I say, you've been doing this for 18 months. I've been doing it 30 years living here. At the zoning board, they said that Elizabeth Street is too dangerous to have an entrance on and off that property. There's other people there that heard it. So Elizabeth Street's out. The only option is Robinson Street coming out of the way. This is a picture of Robinson Street. I don't know if you can see that. You can't fit two cars on Robinson Street. I prepare to thank you for reading. That picture was taken from my back driveway and stop sign. So that's where everybody comes on and off the road. I'd like to start off by saying that I'm not against housing for Delphi. This is about the right kind of housing for the right location. In fact, I understand that the city of Delphi has acquired a property on Washington Street across the body works. Is this property being developed for housing? If no, why not? It's easily accessible by traffic and also within walking distance of downtown businesses. Seems to be like more of a suitable location for multifamily homes. At the BCA meeting, it was revealed that he was developed, proposing at least four duplexes on Robinson Street. The residents of Robinson Street submitted a signed petition to halt this development. The petition was signed by all residents of Robinson Street and others in the affected area. We feel it was the wrong type of development for the area. As a property owner looking on Robinson Street, I'd like to voice my concerns following our brief responses to the five questions found in the Carroll County Zoning Ordinance Handbook. The first one, special exemption will endanger the public safety, comfort, or general welfare of the public in this residential neighborhood. I've lived in my home for 30 years. It was a quiet, peaceful neighborhood. That is why we bought here. There were four houses plus my driveway. The road was a narrow road, thin, but only accommodated a few vehicles a day. Since then, the road was dead-ended by the railroad, creating one way in and one way out. We've had two habitat houses added, plus access to chamber estates, which we were told was for emergency vehicles only. The road is still officially a dead-end road that measures just over 13 feet. An alley is 12 feet from my understanding. We know, from ex we know now or we now experience traffic from certain chamber states <coughs> and the added habitat houses on the same narrow road. Narrow enough that passing cars must use property owner's yards to pass. How are our families expected to join our properties when at any time a vehicle could be driving in it? Certain chamber states tenants have increased police traffic. Are we to expect this with this development as well? More than doubling the amount of residents is going to raise worry and concern for our children and grandchildren. As a collective now residing and visiting children number 64, 
raising the question, how many more vehicles will these duplexes add for visiting family and friends? You said it's limited number for people who live there. What about their visiting family and their visiting friends? You gotta take those into the equation. Number two, the special exemption will injure the use and enjoyment of the other property in the vicinity on both sides of this parcel. Robinson Street is officially a dead end, so no through traffic is to be used in the road. This makes this area a quiet, peaceful neighborhood with only one access point. We enjoy family activities on our property, increasing population has grown to more than double on one lot is sure to change this. Adding this to many residents to one lot will surely cause privacy issues to our secluded neighborhood. This is why certain areas are zoned the way they are, this one being you one. If the town does upgrade the road, am I supposed to be grateful with losing part of my property just to benefit one developer who will be <coughs> sold out in 10 years? What about the effect of our property values? I have two articles, both written in August, that suggest Property values would go down more range. It's a question about how much. I have a third article, as much as 13.8 percent. It could drop. Is the city of Delphi going to write us a check when we sell our property to cover our lost property values? Number three. Special exemption will impede the normal early development and improvements of the surrounding properties for the permitted, for use permitted in this district. This has always been a neighborhood of single family dwellings. Any recent homes that have been added on this road were single family homes. This lot will have at least four duplexes. Will this be the beginning of multifamily rent property and an end to single private owned housing? Will any future resident want to buy or build on a lot containing at least four duplexes filled with rent? Number four, adequate utilities, access road, drainage, and other infrastructure do not currently exist on a vacant lot. Robinson Street is a dead end, non through road, with the width of the road makes it impossible for two cars to meet head on and stay on the road. What happens in the winter when it's only plowed the width of one vehicle? Will the city plan to widen the road to get the cost of the tax payers? Will they move the utility poles, the utility lines, the water meters, fire hydrants, etc., to widen the road only to shrink our properties to benefit the development of four duplexes on this lot? How will the building of the duplexes affect drainage for surrounding areas? Drain runoff from roofs have to go somewhere that would be naturally absorbed by the land. At my second job, I spent a lot of time in subdivisions. I have personally seen the building of one house on one lot cause floating on a neighboring lot. <clears throat> Places that were always dry now have standing water for days after a rain. Here we are speaking of multiple buildings, not just one. How much water are these going to shed and to where? Neighboring properties? Number five, the ingress and egress points. There is only one official access to Robinson Street. Traffic will be more congested. As I mentioned, this is a serious concern because of the limited access to the property. <clears throat> See, you need research. I have 30 years of research and watching what goes on here at Robinson Street. Looking at a map, spending 15 minutes out on Robinson Street or driving up and down Robinson Street on Sunday afternoon, will not show you what it is we deal with. You have to be there when the eight to nine foot white school bus comes down the road. You have to be there when the eight to nine foot trash trucks pick up our trash, plus the one that empties his dumpster for Chamber of States. You have the city trucks, especially now, picking up leaves and limbs. See, the permanent residents of Robinson Street know what to expect on Robinson Street. The renters, though, don't know, some don't care. You see the You see they are the ones that don't look until the last minute to see if it's clear to enter or leave Robinson Street, or to look to see if there's a children playing in someone's yard. It is the renters and their guests that fly up and down Robinson Street at 30 plus miles an hour. You should have been there the day of the horrible crash on the Heartland that closed the northbound lanes. Then the train stopped 
blocking all the crossings in town. See, Santa Laura Road is the alternative route when all the crossings are closed. There was a steady stream of cars going up and down Santa Mill Road. The northbound traffic getting around the accident and the others bypassing the closed train crossings. You can imagine the speed they these people were traveling. You should have been there to see the near misses of people turning onto Robinson Street to turn around, only to meet the next person with the same idea and nearly colliding at the stop sign, all because the traffic on Miller Road got backed up. Mr. Pyatt, yeah. one more minute, please. Yeah, I'm almost done. <clears throat> Do you really want to add the traffic from these duplexes to this one? Is it going to take a horrible accident here for you to realize what we are talking about? Like I stated at the beginning, it's not about stopping Delphi Road. It's about sensible housing. After you vote, I have one request. If you vote for this special exemption, give an honest reason why. Not just a standard Delphi needs housing. An honest reason. One for all of us here, plus those that will watch this on video. All of Delphi citizens. If not, I guess we will have our answer anyway. We will know that you stand with investors, not the citizens of Delphi. See, you have an entire neighborhood ex here expressing concern, but instead you sided with an investor. An investor will be gone in 10 years. Even in Lake Sarah Van Sickle was against this type of development here. If this keeps happening in every corner neighborhood, you're going to lose the citizens like me. The ones that came here for the small town field, not the Lafayette style of renters everywhere. The ones that are here for permanent home, not temporary one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fyatt. Yes. I'd like a chance to speak. My name is Monica Abbott. I live on 201 North Robinson Street. And today with me, I have my daughter, Ayanna, and my daughter, Carleen. My girls are not with me today because election day is tomorrow, and I'm teaching them a lesson. My girls are not with me today because I need them to experience what a city council meeting is. I've been a resident of this county my entire life. She's been here 15. I think we all deserve a little bit of safe this. My girls are here also because they hold value in our home. If you ask them why they do a chore, why they have to do something around our neighborhood, it's because they're part of it. They have to contribute where they live. A lot of that goes into our community. And contributing is helping our neighbors, keeping a good eye out for them. Our concern my standpoint on this is definitely safety. And I come at that with you guys with the narrowing of the road. I don't, I did not cherry pick any facts to come here today to present to you. I don't have articles, I don't have anything like that. But what I will tell you is as a mom, and I, the lady left, I believe her name is Penny, and she's with, is your name Jeff, sir? Is this? Yeah. Yeah. Watson? Watson? Yeah. Mr. Watson? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I believe Penny spent with him and she left. All I have to say to this is the entire time I've owned this home, which has been since 2013, I have been to the Watsons to speak to them in person about the safety of my children because of the tenants traveling up and down the road. It is very known. And I'm sorry, but to say that it is average or common to many other narrow roads doesn't make a bit of difference. Sorry, there's other safety concerns in, in, Del in Delphi we maybe we need to pay attention to doesn't make our narrow road not safe. It just means that there's other narrowings in our town that we need to pay attention to. And I'm sorry, but tonight, when I'm doing a group therapy session, my daughter's sending me a video of people passing in our yard and in the yard across from us just to get by or just to have a conversation about tonight's events is a little concerning to me. To say that it isn't an issue, when it is, clearly. If two vehicles cannot pass on that, and my children are outside, it is an issue. I've had to say it multiple times. That is my concern. I purchased a home in a single family area. I am 38 years old. I spent most of my 20s paying off my life debt to purchase a home to raise my girls in, in my community that I want to stay in. I am here because my grandmother is still here. That's six generations, y'all. Okay, we are vested. And I'm here to stand up for our rights, if you guys would like to build property there, great. Make it beautiful, but make it single family, not multifamily. It is not equipped for it. It is inappropriate for that neighborhood. That's what I have to say, so thank you. Thank you very much for your thoughts. Any others who would like to, to voice comments or ask questions? Thank you. 
I guess this would be like an open question to all the residents of Robinson Street. If there was the road widened, and let's say that it was not widened so far as to have to relocate all the utilities, uh, I suspect about a foot and a half, two feet on each side would be sufficient. But let's, if even that. So let's say that the road was widened and that the dead end was made so that Chamber of States cannot go on to Robinson. Would that at all change your feelings about it? Um, the city will not put barriers on Robert, in Robert Street. They still for emergency vehicles, and they will not hit it at all. That was brought up when the Chamber of States was built, and they turned me down when I suggested something like that. It has to stay open for emergency vehicles. But that doesn't mean anybody else wants to use it. Even though it's in this contract that they can't use it, some of them still do. I know they do, but I was out there today, and they were coming around the corner, and I'm pretty sure we can get in that. Even yeah. if for emergency vehicle access, we can come in off of the same rule, right? Mr. Klaus, you want to say something? Yes, uh, I also agree with Randy. They've already said they would shut down. Um, also, in regards to like moving poles, if you measure the two poles in my yard, they're probably both going to have to be moved, especially the one right there at the corner. It's probably right there at a foot away. And especially, uh, yeah, I think it's probably a foot and a half away from the road. I think it's going to be a question of where the actual wagon wheels are, too. Uh, but uh, I know uh, Mr. Watson, you had to question state your name, please. I was address. told there's another federal courthouse. Can you state your name and address, please? Mm -hmm. and then. Name and address. Jeff Watson, uh, 2847 Missy Lane. Thank you. Own the property of Chamber State. I think you'll find, I looked up a long time ago, that I don't know how the city city would react to this, but 1847, 1892, that was a plot of street. Chamber State Drive is a plot of street. It's not been taken in the city, has not taken it over, but I think we'll find out that what's a plot of the city was made in that period. So it is a plot of street, that's why the, the school corporation and the, the city said that they were going to use the school corporation, said they were going to use it to move the school bus I think you can find that. I don't, it was a private development, and the street was not built to city standards, so it... Yeah, so it's a private street, but it, it is it is noted on the book, so I don't think I can keep people off of it. As much as I would like to. I would like to keep my people actually on 
Same with Little Bit Road. They don't need to come away with it. We've tried to <coughs> but they that right now. We, we tell them when they rent it, go down there, but when they call the police department, the police department, call the police department. They say we can go down there straight. So what am I supposed to do? Yes, um, we'll allow 30 seconds, one minute. Okay. To his comment, I talked to Aaron Lyons last of September, and he said there's kind of a battle going on there. But when I moved in there, that was all overgrown trees back in there. There was nothing. There was no road. And Aaron Lyons says that is a dead end road to all. It's in the book. It's a dead end road. She says it's a dead end road. Officially. Is that a motion? That'd be a motion. So we do have a motion on the floor. Street and uh, walk off the end of Robinson Street as a dam. 
Is there a second for that motion? Second. I, would, I guess I would add that the city would take care of that. At least the Pond City. So we need to amend the original motion since we have a second? Yes. So tell us the order to proceed. So I suppose you would procedurally, you can do it a number of ways. Is this as long as your intent is clear? I just don't know how you usually do it. So do you move to amend your motion to do that? And that motion to amend your motion is seconded. Passed. Then you can go back to the original motion and vote on that. Delete past motion. Insert new motion. Or motion. I motion that we pass this order, this exemption, with the exception that the city is responsible for widening the road and placing concrete and passable barriers at the end of Robin Street. So that is an amended motion. Mike, do you accept that as a motion? Yes. Physical. Oh, my God. Physical. Physical barriers. So now do we vote on that amendment? Do we want to go back? Or it really incorporates both? It really incorporates both. We can vote on it or we can proceed with consensus and then go to the next motion. Is there consensus to accept the amendment to the original motion? No. Okay. Is there a discussion on the motion? Or we are beyond voting on it? Can we put on there that we're going to use the new barrier to go straight to parking? No. 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 I really, I mean, we could definitely bring that up. I really don't think anybody is going to be parking there. If it's an issue, we will definitely address it. But I just, I really don't find anybody would be brave enough to do that. That's just my opinion. Street parking is a separate ordinance. That's true. We could address that later. So we are past the period of public comment. Mr. Watson has his hand up. Counsel, do you wish to recognize him? Yes. We need to go back to people who live here long enough. Robinson Street, I think right there, it went from an old railroad track. Where the old road used to be for the road going there. The access, I call it the access road. That's what it's called. It went over the railroad track. See, that was the only entrance into the property. I put the entrance on the, at the time I did Gold State Road 25, I put the entrance in down the end as a new entrance to try to alleviate some of the traffic going out that way. But you're telling me you're shutting off my street. That was my street to get to the property. Everybody remember that? That was the only railroad track. That was the only access in there. I put the other one in to try to alleviate some of the property when I got the building for it. That road was dead-ended by the railroad, and it's no longer a crossing. So it is no longer, we don't recognize January States on our taser reports or any of the street reports as an act of city behavior. But you're shutting off my entrance to my property. You have another entrance. The existing entrance. There's definitely another entrance up there. You have the entrance off the same way. And that's the one you've been telling them to use. Right. And you've just said, stated that you told your lenders that they cannot use Robinson Street. So you can't kind of play it. You need to talk to the schools. The schools are the ones that told me they were going to use it for a bus route. Because they didn't have any way to turn the bus around down the end of the street. Well, what typically happens on other streets, including our neighborhood, is that the children come to the end of the road. Yeah, Harris Anderson turned his dump truck around in the wintertime when he got down the end. It was loaded because there wasn't enough room to do that. So he'll have to come out and look at what it is. And don't 
get to have a house on Robinson Street, you're shutting the exit off and you're going to take it down and down. Complete house that's got an exit that's, that's it's on Robinson Street. It's not a chamber case on Robinson Street. And you're then looking for the barrier that you may be shutting off the entrance of the house. Well, you're looking at the driveway here. You don't have a house over here. So, house, the house we built on Robinson Street was we built on the railroad right away. Railroad right away is back to the property owner, and then that's just on the Robinson Street. You're going to have to find out where that is. The last, last house on Robinson Street. Over here? Well, if you drive down Robinson Street, the channel is on the road. It's the last one on the right hand side. I think he's talking about the building to mark the bench. Yeah. That but it's not, it, it's driveway and the front goes on mm -hmm. Chamber Street. Yeah. Yeah. It's, where you're, it's where you end up staying on the property line yeah. down the street. So you're saying for that, before you get to the, before you get to the river right away, then the city's already deeded the property back to us. We own that. We own that street as what you're, you're thinking is correct, probably. Well, I don't see that that is material to the motion that we have in front of us. Or, you know, it's something that we can certainly... But you should have an access off the house. The house is on 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 Stipulation that the road um, be widened at city expense um, and that uh, Robinson Street be blocked as a dead end street. That's the motion. We have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Obviously approves that this could be used for multifamily. There are many steps yet to go through, including area planning and including the plan to widen the street and to um, dead end it 